Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are going to be thinking about ugh, public speaking. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you are on the boat with me where you get anxiety and you just start sweating because you don't know what to do when you're public speaking, well, join my lifeboat because I have someone that's going to help us. <laughs> I have Brendan here who's going to be able to teach us and help us how to really conquer that, you know. So, Brendan, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Yeah, absolutely, Vince. Well, first of all, it's so great to be on. Thanks for having me on the show. And yeah, absolutely. So, my name is Brendan. I'm the founder of Master Talk. Master Talk is a YouTube channel I started to help the world master the art of communication and public speaking. And I also coach executives and entrepreneurs to become top percent communicators in their industry. That's awesome. That's good that you do that because I was actually looking at some of your videos and it, the way that you are able to project yourself and the way that you have so much emotion and power in what in what you're saying is so inspiring because I'm just watching your videos. I'm like, man, do can I sound like that? Like, do I can I really be able to do that? And I'm just watching. I'm like listening to your points and your key tips. And I'm just like, you know what? That makes sense. So I love I love I love I love what you're doing because, you know, you truly help me think about myself when I'm speaking in front of people and I didn't have a lot I don't I mean I don't have a lot of experience speaking from a lot of in front of a lot of people but when it's like more than a group of three oh my goodness I I automatically start like getting hot and just oh my goodness freaking having a mini panic attack a panic attack <laughs> It's funny how it's like, but if it was three, it's fine. But when it's four, that's when the problem starts. <laughs> yeah, that's when the problem starts. Cut me off. Tap me out. I am done. <laughs> what would you say for people like myself who have this type of problem? Here, here's what I would say, Bitsy. Let's start the conversation this way. We dream about so many things in our life. We're at the expense of vacations we want to go on the houses we want to buy, the trips we want to go on, the Gucci, Louis Vuitton purses we might want to buy. When was the last time we dreamed about our communication skills? And the answer, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like uh, lifeboats, uh, I can't do this, anyone above three. And that's the problem. Society has conditioned us to believe that communication is like a chore. Yeah. It's like doing the dishes, when in reality, that's not what communication is about. Communication is about creating impact in the same way you're doing it with your incredible show, with the message, the platform that you're sharing out with other people. Thank you. Right, of course, that's what communication is for. So where do I start? I start with this question, Mitzi, that we haven't really think about, thought about. And the question is, how would your life change if you were an exceptional communicator? And that's where I start people with, because we don't really think about it. I wouldn't know how my life would change. Because my circle is so small that I barely even talk. You know what I'm saying? So when I so when I do have these conversations with people outside of my little circle and for my and for my platform, it's easier because it's one on one. You know, I haven't gone past three, so <laughs> 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 All right, so it's different. So I feel like I'm an exceptional speaker when it's one on one, but I don't think I'll be able to do a TED talk because as soon as I walk on the stage, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm walking back out. You know what I mean? So it's just funny. Um, meaning so many people actually have gone on TED Talks and someone like yourself who who teaches this because it seems like paralyzing for me personally. Right. And and here's my advice. Let's forget about the TikTok, te the TikTok, the TED Talk, the whatever. Right. Here, here's what I would say. I'm sure there's a lot more than three people listening to this podcast, given your yeah. energy, the vibrance you have. So here, here's what I, I would see it. What if we got better at communication to 100x your downloads? Right. That's the way that I think about it. Imagine the people you can impact if we hundred extra downloads, how yeah. people would feel the message that you would share. Focus on that, because I think what's what's crazy about communication posting, people think it's just standing up on a stage. No, no, it's every interaction, every moment of your life. It's the way that you mm -hmm. talk to your family. It's the way that you spend time with people. It's the way that you order food at a restaurant, it's the way that you meet strangers when you travel, it's every moment of your life. And when we realize communication is about leading a more fulfilling life, that's when we start getting excited about communication. We don't have to give the TED talk, but we need to start with something that we're excited about. 
Yeah, that's so true because I'm just reflecting and thinking about it. And you're right, I'm able to handle myself and speak and communicate and, you know, project out what I what needs to be said at each of those moments. So it's like it's not a problem. I think, yeah, I, I think about it in the wrong perspective and or I don't think about it enough so that if I'm ever in that situation or if I'm able to put it in a different mindset that it's able to have a bigger impact. Because you're right. I mean, if there was a, a hundred more downloads or a thousand more downloads, it would be a different perspective because it, I would be realizing that, you know what, it's reaching out to more people. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Hmm. So how would I do that then? I mean, what's the, after I think about it, how do I really make that in action? Right. Absolutely. So we can totally talk about that. And I have some tactics. Don't worry. But that's the first step. Because notice how now you're smiling. Now you're happy. Now you're thinking about the next step. And that's what the question helps unlearn. Because mm -hmm. society tricks us into believing that communication fear is normal, that we should yeah. just all have it. And it's like, no, the reason we're all scared of communication is because the bloody education system, your whole life, mm -hmm. when you gave presentations and school, elementary, high school, they were all mandatory. We don't wake yeah. up one morning and say, hey, Mitz, you want to get breakfast and present all day? <laughs> no. <laughs> right? Nobody says that. Yeah. And they're all different. So it's never, Mitzi, what are you passionate about? What are you excited about? Do you like podcasting? Do you like fashion? No, it's you got to talk about Shakespearean poetry. <laughs> it's like, you're like, okay. Yeah. Right. And then the third piece, you think I was done. I'm not even done. The third piece is every presentation is tied to a punishment. Oh my goodness, yes. Right. So if you don't do a great job, you don't get a pat on the back and say, let's go, kid. You got this, Mitzi. No, you get a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. You lose like 25% of your grade. So yeah, is it normal that we grew up hating communication, thinking that's a chore? Absolutely. Right? Mm, and that's yeah. why we're scared of communication. It's not because we have a disease. It's because the way we've been taught, it's just flat out wrong. Yeah. And if you're not taught in that circumstance at, within the educational system, you're taught at home not to speak about certain things either. You know, you don't have a good communication with your parents or your grandparents or just expressing how you feel or what or what you're passionate about because you're afraid of that fear factor is always implemented in. You're supposed to think a certain way, act a certain way, behave a certain way and just always be like robotic on a certain routine and system, you know, from a very young age. So yeah, it makes perfect sense why people have a bad communication problem. I think once we resolve the communication problem, we can really resolve the fact that there's no fear behind public speaking because it's just like you're speaking and you just happen to have the public listening to you. I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, I love it. Right. I like how you're the one giving the advice. And that's true. Right. Because well, you made me think about it. No. <laughs> there you go. So now you're the, which I love, which I love. Because there's so many people out there, Mitzi, who are listening to your show right now that wish they could do what you could do. Because you're probably looking at me and you're saying, oh, my God, I can't give a TED Talk. I can't do... And so many people who are listening to this podcast are probably thinking, well, I don't even think I could have conversations with people. How is Mitzi doing this? She's like super talented. She's really great at what she does. Right. So we always focus on what we don't have. We don't focus on what we have. So that's what allows us to push forward. Is that helpful? No, yeah, that's very helpful. And that's true. That's very enlightening because we don't we don't put that into consideration. And I just posted a quote about that too just the other day. And it really made me think like, hmm, maybe I need to start thinking about my own achievements and my own accomplishments and what I'm cap my own capabilities are, you know, because not a lot of people can actually do what I do or handle or just be graceful at it, you know, when I'm doing it. And not I, it, it takes a lot for me. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take a lot for me to think about it, but when I do think about it, it's like eye opening. It's refreshing. It's like our conversation right now. It's very refreshing. Like I know at the end of this conversation, you're going to have me just thinking about this the whole rest of the day. <laughs> and I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. I hope, I hope in a positive way. So, so now the key now to your point is, okay, Brendan, we thought about it. We dreamed about, so now what do we do? So the way that I think about this, Mitzi, is communication is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. And that's why it gets confusing for people. Because one of those balls is eye contact, one of them is facial expression, smiling, body language, storytelling, and that's what gets overwhelming. So the better piece to focus on is what are the three easiest balls to juggle? Because if we can juggle three balls, it's already really good. So let's start with those three. 
the first one, the random word exercise. Pick a random word like cell phone, like Apple, like couch, and give random presentations out of thin air. And what I teach people to do is if you can make sense out of nonsense, Mitzi, you can make sense out of anything. So that's the first exercise I recommend that we do on a daily basis. But like in my head, I can make sense out of nonsense. But when I say it out loud and I say it to other people, sometimes they don't they don't understand. And it's like, but see, that makes no sense. But I'm like, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's a hard situation to be in, you know, because you're always going to get those people that it's like, that makes no sense. Like, where are you even coming with it? You know what I mean? So for those type of people, I'm assuming they're just not my audience, right? I, I, I think you're a very clear communicator personally and take it from the guy who coaches a lot of people. So, so I think we got to audit. I think we got to audit your friend circle. That's a different conversation. <laughs> right. That's a whole different therapy session. Yeah, a- <laughs> but yes, I, I do think the random word X is really helps. And, and the best thing about it is that it's fun. You don't have to do this on your own. What I recommend some of my older clients do is to do this with their kids. Right. So they do it with their kids, their nieces, their nephews. In your case, it might be your nieces, your nephews, right? The people around you, just your friend group in their 20s. And then you work with them to get better at communication, to get better at this. But the key is just to do it more often. That's number yeah. one. Okay. Awesome. And what's the next juggle? Next one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I like how you're playing with my analogies. Good. So, so there's two other balls. So the second one is question drills. We get asked questions all the time in our life, Mitzi. On a podcast, at school, at work, we're constantly bombarded by a ton of questions. And most of us are reactive to those questions, not proactive. So we sit there and we wait for the question to appear. So you come up with a great question. You go, Brenda, what about this? And I go, uh, I don't really know how to answer that one. Like a few years ago, and I started guesting on podcasts, Mitzi, I was horrible, terrible. I remember somebody asked me the funniest question. He looked at me and he said, Brendan, where does the fear of communication come from? And I looked at the guy and I was like, I don't know, dude, Los Angeles, San Diego. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I was reactive and I got yeah. caught off guard. So every day for five minutes, Bitsy, what did I do? I wrote down the answer to one question. Just five minutes. That's it. But if you do that every day for a year, you'll have answered 365 questions about your industry. You'll be unbeatable. So that's number two. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. That's interesting. Okay, what's the next ball? <laughs> so, <laughs> right, like you can do that on your own. You don't even need to practice this external. You literally take a piece of paper out, write the question, write the answer, then do the same thing the next day. Yeah, I mean, simple, easy. Yeah, yeah, you don't even need three people. There are two people or seven. Yeah, people. I just need myself. I need to be present. There you go. <laughs> if you happen and, to look on my board, well, then you know it. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then ball number three. It's so simple that nobody does it. Make a list of the five people you love the most in your life. That could be a family member, a significant other. It could be a client. It could be a podcast guest. You've had a childhood friend. Make that list. Five people you love the most in the world. And then ask yourself a simple question. When was the last time you sent this person, not a 20 minute, not a 20 hour, but a 20 second video message just saying how much you appreciate having them in your life? And the answer for most of us when we look at that list, Mitzi, is zero so i would start there well the reason why i would say zero is because i'm you know i have an android and android quality is really crappy compared to all of my apple users so they tell me not to send them anything any videos so that's my excuse (laughs) that that's 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 a valid point you know uh, no no i don't think it's valid but i'll give you i'll give you points for creativity because I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You see, you got a curveball. Now you know what to respond for that one if you get it next. Because <laughs> I swear, people with apples, they hate Android people because the quality is not the same when you look at it. You know, they're like, what is this? Yeah, so that's my experience. I think my experience listening to you is that you got some really weird friends. But anyways, I think the <laughs> point, very people yes. are 
yeah, they care a lot more about their iPhones than relationships. I think that's a story for another day, another therapy session. But <laughs> another therapy here, session, right? So, so here's what I would do. You know, I'll I'll tell you a story. You know, one woman who interviewed me a few months ago, her name is Christina. I told her about the video message thing, and she said, "Huh, let me do this." So she sent video messages to her grandparents, and their grandparents were ecstatic because they never see her because they live like at the other on the other side of the country, and they were so happy to see a video message because they got to hear their granddaughter's voice, and that's the point. Because communication is not about the quality of the video. Go watch my first videos. I'm living in my mother's basement making shitty ass videos. And I still live in my mother's basement. Imagine. And my just my quality's a lot better now. Yeah. But, right. But the point I want to drive is that most of us need to realize what communication is for. And what video messages teach us teaches us, Mitzi, is that vi- the communication is not about having being at a chore. It's about changing people's lives. Imagine if you took time to send, I don't know, five people are listening to your show, like a quick video message. Hey, really like that you're, imagine how much that would mean to them. Or people sent you one and that's the magic. Yeah, I see, I know. I The point, I understand the point. The point is valid and is there. But I just had to throw in that curveball because, you know, that was the first thing that popped in my head. But, like, mm. but no, I understand the point. The point is to have that communication, to know that they that you still care and that, you know, that you're appreciated and you're valued. You know, so, yeah, I, I totally understand that point. I, I guess I just have to start doing it now and just try to use a different app or something to see if it, see, if, like, just download this app so it could work better like just so that it could work out but no i see the point thank you for that absolutely or just send it to people who aren't iphone users forget about them they don't deserve your videos i know i don't they don't need to be in my life anyways (laughs) i mean i got i got an android toast we're in the same okay let's see android there you go air five (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome i had such a great time talking with you it was just like i was talking to a friend you are so easy just to talk to and i love it i truly appreciate your time and just having you on my show and just sharing and um, providing me your visual metaphors because I'm a visual person. So I was able to see the juggling and the 18 and balls, the three balls. So I was like, oh, okay. It made a lot more sense. And I know I have a lot to work on when it comes to my relationship with communication. And I know that other people in my audience that may be listening to this show may be having that um weird relationship with communication too but just to wrap up what would be some more great advice because i know you already been giving us some great advice what would be some lasting advice that you can possibly give us well first of all Mitz, i love how open you are how vulnerable you are i think that's why your audience loves you so much and i think what i would say as parting words is don't forget about the first question how would your life change if you became an exceptional communicator. A lot of people, when they hear that question, Mitzi, they kind of just they go, oh, yeah, that's a nice question. And they don't really think about it too much. Right? I think the real champions who are listening to the show, they are going to spend 15 minutes after the show is over to just reflect on what the answer to this question is for them. Hmm, how would my life change if I became an exceptional communicator? Because for all of us, the answer is different Some of us want to be better mothers to our children. Other people want to be massive podcast hosts. Others want to be big business owners. We all have our dreams. But when you focus on what it is that you want and you have a burning desire around communication, you'll do my easy threes. You'll do the video messages. You'll do the question drills. You'll do the random word exercises once you have the motivation to run and go after it. Awesome. Thank you. I I truly appreciate that. You know, I appreciate your honesty and your sincerity and just just letting it all out and just sharing it, too, because that that is a good question. That's something that I'm going to be writing down (laughs) and put it on my put it on my desktop, just a little sticky so I can just think about it all the time, because this is something that, you know, I know that I need, I need work on with communication and I'm not afraid to be vulnerable because I know I'm not perfect, you know, and I think a lot of people, once they realize that they're not perfect, there won't be, they won't be so afraid to be vulnerable like I am. And I think that's the reason why I do my shows because I'm honest with my lack of knowledge and lack of understanding and lack of, you know, just, just knowing because I don't know everything and not everybody knows everything. So I think this is the the greatest platform for it. And I thank my guests for listening and everybody. And if you guys want to know about more about Brendan and you want to actually check it out and find out all of these great tips that he has, because he has a lot of tips. Um, I have his, I have a link to his personal YouTube channel 
has access to his Instagram and all of his social media platforms. You can go follow him, check him out, subscribe, because I'm telling you, you would be listening just like I was like, oh, these are great tips. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. Till next time. Bye.